would walk into the first day of school. <laughs> in the office, she prepared a week in advance. I also have no friends, so. Um, <laughs> the rulers can be your friends. They are. Yeah. Are we spooning? We're spooning! We're spooning! Oh, so squeeze a lot! <laughs> so squeeze a lot! not in my normal kitchen today. I am with the wonderful Yolanda Gamp from How To Cake It and we're caking together in Toronto. Teamwork. I'm gonna eat a chocolate. Does anyone watch it? Oh, uh oh, uh oh, I shook my leaf off. <laughs> <laughs> so on Yo's channel, we are, what are we making on your channel again? We are making lunch boxes. Lunch box cake. cakes. Of course. How To Cake It. Of course. <laughs> so because we're gonna make lunch box cakes on Yo's channel, we're gonna make the things that go inside the lunch boxes on my channel, so you guys can have your lunch box cake and eat it too. Yeah. Oh yes, I like that. No, 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 I like that. <laughs> you can eat the lunch box and the treats inside. And the treats inside, and the treats inside. So everything you need for the lunch box cake is gonna be on the How To Cake It channel, and I'll leave links down below. But let's get into making our lunch box treats. <laughs> Have you ever caked an orange? No. Have you ever caked a juice box? No. All right, well then let's get started. Okay, sounds good. All right, so the things that we're gonna need, we're gonna be making a PB&J sandwich. Yum. We're gonna be making an orange. Healthy. How, you need a fruit in your lunch. You gotta have fruit. You really do. We're gonna be making a juice, kind of a juice bottle or a juice box, and we're gonna be making some crisps. Oh, yeah. you mean chips? Chips, crisps. Crisps, okay. So the things that you're gonna need for your different lunchbox pieces, we've got a pound cake baked in a loaf tin, some vanilla frosting and some chocolate frosting, so a little bit of smooth peanut butter and some raspberry jam. And we have assorted candies, and then we have candy melts in yellow, orange, white, and blue, and colored sugar in orange and yellow. Better than normal sugar, because it's colored. Yes. Always. More fun. All right, you're also gonna need knives and spoons and all those good things, but you're gonna need a paper towel roll cut in half and cut down the center. And one of these lovely, would you like to display yes, our will. beautiful circle mold today? So you can either use a circular baking tin or just like a plastic circle chocolate mold. Anything that's spherical. Yes. Let's get into it. Okay. All right. Put me to work. Oh, I will. <laughs> it's your kitchen and you're doing all the work and I'm gonna be sitting back there just observing. Should I get you a chair? I would like a chair. I like <laughs> this. Come to Toronto, this is awesome. All right, so first up, we are going to cast chocolate in these. So we're not gonna bake in them. I actually have never baked in them. Okay. But we need to get the texture of the orange. So I'm gonna scoop in a little bit of the orange candy melt and then can you put in a little bit of the sanding sugar? Yes. Like, I'm gonna go like a tablespoon or a soup spoon of the orange candy melt and then okay. maybe like a good half a teaspoon of sugar in each. Okay, and you want both colors of sugar? No, just the orange. Just the orange, that's right. The yellow will be for our chips. Oh, yum. Ah. And I should stir the sugar in? Yes, please. Okay, let me add it. I like having help in the kitchen. Oh, that one looks great. Oh, that's good. This is kind of nice because it gives you just that little bit of extra texture yeah. in there. All right, these guys will have the texture of an orange skin and they can go into the fridge. I don't know where your fridge is. It's, she's right here. <laughs> she's very loud. Maybe I do. I just didn't want to do it. I heard that. <laughs> Let those guys chill out for like 10, 15 minutes in the fridge and then we're gonna do a second coat. We're gonna spoon in just a little bit more of our chocolate mixture and make sure that you build it up on the sides. Oh yeah, you need some chocolate. Yes, please. So like, I'm gonna say like about half the amount you put in last time. And don't focus too much on the base, just kinda of like drag it up the sides. Spoon it up. Are we spooning? We're spooning! We're spooning! All right, back in the fridge, 15 more minutes. If you have any trouble getting your little spheres out of the pan, you can snap freeze them for five minutes. But this is what you should have. Oh, I love the texture. It looks kind of just like an orange. It looks like an orange. Are yours coming out? Okay. Let's have a look. We actually didn't snap freeze ours. They came oh, out yes. just fine with the fridge. But you can, if you need to. All right, two for you and two for two me. Two for me. Very nice. 
Now we've got a skillet heating. Would you like to get our skillet? I will. Or a fry pan. Or a skillet. You want to take one half? Okay. Should we do it together? Okay. Let's do it together. Is there enough room? There's yes. enough room. Place it down on the skillet. But it's chocolate. It's okay. chocolate. And just press. Okay. All right, perfect. That's great. It's perfect. All right, that is one half of your orange. Now we get to stuff it full of candy. Oh, I can do that. You can do that. So you want to pile them up as high as you can without letting them kind of go over the outside edges because we need to stick it together. Right. Okay. I think I've met my... <laughs> I am <laughs> impressed. I'm at the peak. I'm actually very impressed. All right. And then you take your other half, smooth it off, and join them together. Our better half? Our better half. This is so smart. And straight on top. Oh no, I have too much candy! Too much candy! Oh, I was like, put hold more on, candy. Hold on, hold on. Put more candy. I can, I can solve this problem. <laughs> I could help you. All right, now we have to make like the four or six little segment lines that go around the top. Yeah. A little round hole. Okay. Because you know the orange has normally got like that yeah. weird little navel. Yeah. Oh, is that why they're called navel oranges? Oh, it probably is. Because they have a navel. Do you want me to make you a leaf? Oh, yes, please. I'm here to help. I came here with like some of my ingredients, but not all of them. So I've raided Yo's candy stash and her tool stash and her equipment stash. I love Thanks. nothing more than when I have leftover candy. I'm surprised I haven't eaten it all. All right. Oh, is this my leaf? That's your leaf, and the little bit of the gummy should just attach it, just sticking straight down on. Hey! I love it! We're like the real housewives of Orange County. Oh, yes! This is my kind of Orange County. You can give a little shake? Oh, yes. That's orange goodness right there. <laughs> covered sandwich. So we have a pound cake that's been cooked in a loaf tin and we're just gonna slice it like it's bread basically. I'm into that. I'm into that. Take it from the middle because the middle slices will be higher and then we're gonna use the end slices to fill another cake. So don't use it all. Okay. Just one sandwich each. You mean we have to save cake? Okay. We have to. Just a small amount. I was ready to snack. We'll have lunch. Lunch okay. will be ready soon. Okay. All right. Mom, I don't want the corners. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two slices for you, two slices for me. Do you want the crusts on? Do you want the crusts off? I'll have the crusts on. I'll be a good girl. Excellent. So we want it to look nice on the outside edges. So I've put peanut butter into a snap seal bag. Do you just want to cut like a fine tip off the outside edge? And then we're going to squiggle peanut butter kind of around outside and over the edges of our base piece of bread. And while you're doing that, I'm going to mix some delicious peanut butter buttercream. Oh yes. If you guys are looking for quantities and like buttercream recipes and things, I'll leave them all on the website. So check the link down below if you're actually gonna make these. There we go. Perfect. So once you've done that, you can take a little spatula and we're just gonna fill in the outside of peanut butter with peanut butter frosting. So you've got frosting with your cake. Yum. I wish I got this sandwich in my lunch. Yeah, I kind of wish I did too. Make sure that your raspberry jam goes just slightly over the outside edges of your cake so that we can see it from the outside. So we're ready to sandwich? We're ready to sandwich. It's <laughs> oh so small. Oh, it's so cute. Sandwiches are ready, kids. They're actually gonna eat this lunch. <laughs> orange juice here but I thought we already had too much orange so I wanted a different color and I picked Hawaiian punch because I figured that can be literally any color pretty much it can be pink it can be red it can be blue it's gonna be blue today you want to take a Hawaiian punch or a small bottle and peel the label off try and keep the label intact if you can as much as possible so peel it off but don't rip it and then I'm gonna use a serrated knife and I'm gonna slice through the middle be careful of your fingers Once you've made your start with the serrated knife, then you can just use scissors to cut all the way around. Once it's done, you need to dry the inside completely thoroughly. You don't want any moisture in there at all or it's gonna cause streaks on the chocolate. 
And then we're gonna spoon in, I'm gonna guess two tablespoons. We're gonna do two coats here, so it doesn't have to be too thick on the first round. I'm just gonna tilt mine, so you can kind of see it just sort of tilting up the sides. You wanna, again, pay particular attention to these top edges. You need those to be just a little bit thicker because they're where it's gonna crack when you pull it apart, if anywhere. You can give it a little shake. Tip, tip, shake, tip, tip, shake. It's gonna feel like you've tipped like most of that chocolate out, but we're gonna do it on the coat, so you want that. You want it to be pretty nice and thin. Should we put them in the fridge? Yes, we shall. Yes, we shall. So once you're set, you want to just put in more chocolate, drag more it up chocolate. the sides with a spoon and reset it again. Put that one like upside down onto a piece of parchment because that way the chocolate will kind of go down to the bits that we want thicker and it won't keep pulling in the bit that we don't need any more chocolate in. And now we chill. Wait. Oh, let's chill. There's no crumb coat. There's just chill. There's you just look so zen. I'm chilling. She's like chill. Done. Chill. <sighs> Once you're happy that your little bottles are set, mm -hmm. really, really well set. Are you happy yours is really, really well set? I'm very happy with my bottle. I'm very happy with my bottle. Now we want to take the smallest, sort of finest scissors you can find, and you want to make a nick at a relatively thick point in the bottle. And then you can just peel it back. Oh. Oh. It's like opening a present. Try to apply even pressure as you're peeling it off so that you're not putting any pressure on one particular side. At about there, I'm going to take my lid off and then I'm going to pop that one out just by pressing the base. Woo! That's There's awesome. the top of our bottle. If your bottle cracks, don't stress. Melt a little bit of extra candy melt. Just use it like a glue and stick it back together, particularly if it's cracked underneath where the label goes because we're going to stick a label over that piece anyway. Just... Oh, I see. Oh! Ooh. That was fun. Now I am going to start slicing the remains of our pound cake. So I'm gonna slice it into about the same thickness slices that we used for our little PB&J sandwiches. You wanna cut some circles out of that? Yes. So the circle cutter that we've used is about the same size that goes kind of inside, maybe a little smaller. We can put frosting around. And then we've got our chocolate frosting in a snap seal bag and I'm just gonna snip off a bit of a thick chunky tip to fashion a piping bag. I'm gonna put a little bit of frosting in the bottom. Do you want me to do yours as well? Yes, please. The bottom of both of ours so that everything sticks together. All right, in goes our little cake circles. Press them down, but again, just be careful not to apply too much pressure to any of your thin spots. And then more frosting. More frosting. Now with this layer, try and just keep it slightly Under. below the line. Oh, okay. that's cute, that'll do. More frosting, more cake. This smells so good. Now, before you throw away all of your mess, make sure that you keep the little ring thing and the lid, and we're gonna glue those together using a little bit of our leftover blue. Dip it in. And join it up. I'm glad you called it a ring thing. I couldn't work out what to call it. I think that's its official name. <laughs> Something like that. Now, we're gonna use the fry pan technique like we did with the orange. I'm not gonna to touch the bottom half because it's got frosting in it and it's pretty flat anyway. I'm just gonna do the top half that I can hold by its little lid. The frosting should hold the cake in place. Don't worry too much if there's like a little gap or anything because we're gonna stick a label on top anyway. All right, with your label, you wanna try and meet it up as close as you can, but pick the good side because every cake, everything pretty much always has a good side and a bad side. Put the good side forward. With my good side. With my good side. Least fingerprints. Oh, I like Ooh. that. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of my blue chocolate and just, so you can kind of position the label in place and then once you're happy with the overlap, just paint a little chocolate up the side. And then finally, you want just a little bit of that blue chocolate on the inside of the lid, not too much. And we're gonna use that to stick the lid on our bottle. Make sure that whoever's getting these knows that obviously the lid and the plastic wrapper are not edible. We made a cake. I love this. Isn't he cute? So chips. I mean, they're a staple in my lunchbox. It sounds like celery was more. I like chips. Did you did you get chips as a kid? No, I got chocolate. You got chocolate? Oh, chips, chocolate. This is kind of both. This yeah. is chips made out of oh, chocolate. Oh, yes. This ah, is this is chocolate chips. So we're going to make traditional crisps, but we're going to make them out of white chocolate. 
and a yellow chocolate with a little bit of sanding sugar. So you want to take a piece of parchment and just take like a teaspoon, okay. a light teaspoon, place it on the parchment and make like a like an oval kind of a shape. Think a chip that's flat. Think of a chip. Think of a chip. Channel you're in a chip maker. Okay, I will. And just do a couple of little sprinkles of my yellow sanding sugar, which is out salt. And then you just want to slide your little parchment pieces into one of your little tube rolls. You want a ton of these, like a ton. We're going to make a packet of chips. You can do some long ways, you can do some sideways. Pop them on a tray and into the fridge to set. Make as many or as few of those if you want. And I find that accenting them with an actual chip packet, maybe one a little smaller than this, is perfect to kind of get that school lunch look complete. Yeah. To the fridge! So out of the fridge, all you need to do is peel. Oh, we made yes. chips. What do you think? So beautiful. So beautiful. You can change up the colors for different flavors. Kind of something around a yellow works really well. <sighs> look at our chips. They look great. Perfect. Elise, I think we just caked a lunch. I think we caked the heck out of a lunch. Is there a better way to go back to school? No. I think this is incentive to go back to school. I think you give your kids this. They're gonna go back to school with bells on. Yeah, totally, totally. Can you imagine you actually got this for lunch? I don't wanna say never, but I can't imagine anyone actually sending all of this to school. But if they did, you're talking about the most popular kid in class, right? Absolutely. There. Everyone would wanna sit at your lunch table. I wouldn't let anyone sit at my lunch table. <laughs> Mom, those are my chocolate chips. <laughs> you know what? We need something to pack our lunches into. What could we use? What would we pack a lunch of cake into? Mm. Mm. I'm thinking a cake lunchbox. A cake lunch in a cake lunchbox? Yeah. Double the cake? Oh, happy day. I think this has to happen. We are going to cake a lunchbox over on the How to Cake It channel. I'm going to leave links down below where you can find that video. Make sure that you go and check it out. Follow Yolanda. You guys are going to absolutely love her. She is a cake genius. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I didn't say that lightly. I didn't Thank say that lightly. Thank you very much. She's a cake genius, a master. <laughs> if any of you moms out there or kids out there decide to cake a lunch and cake a lunchbox, please put it up on Instagram and hashtag us so we can see it. Hashtag my cupcake addiction, hashtag how to cake it. We want to see it. I love seeing my fans. I want to see this collaboration come yes. to life in your guys' kitchen. So definitely tag us. Instagram, we will share some of our favorites. Yes. Awesome. Let's go cake a lunchbox. Yes. Let's. Let's.